Okay, so next we want to do some non-parametric measuring because maybe so if we come back up to this line here, um, these lines fit the data fairly well, but it might be that there's some underlying trends as you get closer to the to the gap or to the cutoff point here that the lines might not be capturing. Um, if we wanted to be super fancy with the parametric models, we could throw in some squared terms or some cubed terms to make the lines squiggly. Um, in this case, that looks pretty linear, so we're not going to. But we can do some non-parametric stuff too to see um, kind of how big that gap is if we're not trying just a regression line. So to do that, let's scroll down to after this table. And we're going to add a subheading here called non-parametric stuff. Okay, so for non-parametric stuff, you don't need to worry about centering. You don't need to worry about anything, really. Um, you just have to feed three things to a function. Um, the function we're using is called rdrobust. And it has a ton of arguments too, kind of like the RD density plot thing that we did before with the McCrary density test. So if you look at the documentation for this, so put your cursor in it and then press F1, um, or go to the help panel and then search for RD robust. Um, there's tons of arguments that you can feed to it. Um, if you scroll way down, way down, the very long help file, um, there are examples. Ow, that is like, a really pathetic example. Um, if you Google RD Robust, there are like they have a website with more examples on it than just this. So don't look at these examples. Look at their website for examples. Um, but basically, what you do is you feed it three things. You give it the outcome variable, you give it the running variable, and you give it the cutoff. And that's all it needs to be able to parameter or to non-parametric non-parametrically measure the size of that gap. So that's what we'll do here. We'll say y equals, because that's our outcome. And this doesn't play well with the whole tidyverse world. So we have to do the dollar sign column marker thing. So we say tutoring. We don't need to use the centered version because it works without centering. So we say tutoring, dollar sign. So this is our outcome, which is exit exam. Our running variable is x. So we say x equals tutoring, dollar sign, entrance exam. And then we say C for cutoff equals 70. That's all we do. You click on play, and it will spit out a bunch of stuff. Oddly, it does not actually give you the, the estimate. It shows a whole bunch of information about it. It tells you what bandwidth it used. It used the 7 point, so plus or minus 7.6. Neat. It figured that out automatically. Um, but it doesn't actually give you like the estimate. That's because you have to feed whatever this spits out into a function called summary, and that will show you the results. Um, it doesn't work with tidy. It would be wonderful if this worked with tidy, but the, the authors of RD Robust have not made it work with tidy, so there's no way to convert this into like a nice data frame. Um, in an ideal world, this stuff would show up in glance, and the actual results would show up in tidy, but it's not. So you can either put summary here, and then wrap that in parentheses. So we have summary, RD robust, etc. cetera. Um, I don't like that just because that's like too many nested functions. So instead we can do the pipe sign, which is the same idea. We're just gonna take RD robust and feed it into summary. So we're gonna do pipe summary. So now if we run it, we'll get all of that same information, it tells us what bandwidth it used, but then we have the actual estimate. So based on this um, RD robust, non-parametric um, gap measurement, our gap is um, 10 points, 9.99. Notice how it's negative. Um, that's not because it's like making test scores worse. That's just because it chooses a different reference point. Like if you're looking at the picture, um, the gap here goes from there to there. So what it's what we did with regression is it's measuring kind of the jump up. Um, with RD robust, it's measuring the jump down. Um, so that's why it shows negative. It really is positive. That's just kind of the size of the gap according to RD robust is 9.99, etc. Um, it also gives you statistical um, information, gives you a confidence interval, it gives you p values, other stuff. Um, so that is the estimate using the default bandwidth, which was 7.6. Um, 
and it even tells you the kernel. The default kernel was triangular, so it's weighting the points that are right next to the cutoff more than the ones further away. Um, so that's cool. You can plot this non-parametrically. Um, the plot syntax is actually identical to RD robust, um, which is kind of cool. So if you copy RD robust, this whole thing, um, minus that pipe summary thing, because we don't need to summarize the plot, we just run this to get the plot. We'll copy that, come down to an empty chunk, put it here, and we're just gonna change this from RD robust to RD plot. And if we run just that, leave everything else the same, we should get a plot that looks like that. And there is the gap, the 9.99 gap. Um, you'll notice these points here, these actually don't correspond to these same points that we saw earlier. Let's close these, we can scroll up easier. Um, so in this plot, these are the actual data points. Like there's a person who scored at almost 90 and then got a 50 on their exit exam. That's an actual data point. Um, when you do RD plot, it doesn't show actual data points. It makes basically a bucket. It's kind of like a histogram almost. So it says, um, like here at 80, it's saying take everybody from like 79 to 80-ish, um, calculate their average, and show that on the y-axis. So the, these are kind of binned points instead of the actual points. Um, in the documentation for rdplot, I think there's a way to change that. Um, yeah, n bins. So by default, it's doing um, something. So you can you can tell it what to do with the bins. I think there's even a way to say don't use bins and just use the points. Um, there's a whole bunch of different options. So that's that's what the R and D plot is showing. Again, these are not actual points. These are binned averages, but it's still showing the same thing. So there's our gap. That's our 9.99 gap using. Um, robust regression discontinuity non-parametrically. Um, we can do a couple other things here just to um, modify this. So right now we're just using the ideal bandwidth that it chose automatically, which was 7.6, um, which it figured out because of fancy algorithms. But to check for robustness, it's often helpful to kind of expand that that bandwidth out to like maybe twice whatever the default is and then shrink it down and just look at an even narrower version of that and see what happens. So to do that, we can just copy the same code here for RD robust, Whoop. copy, um, and add a new chunk. So here, the way we change the cutoff, or not the cutoff, cutoff is C. The way we change the bandwidth is, if you look at the help file for it, um, the argument is H, and I know this just because I've done this a few times. So H equals specifies the main bandwidth. Um, if you omit it, it chooses the best one automatically. If you say H equals like five, now it's going to use a bandwidth of plus or minus five. And if you look at it, it'll say there's our bandwidth estimate five. And if we use five, then our coefficient is negative 10.8, or so almost 11 using non-parametric um, estimation, using a bandwidth of five. So it's getting bigger as we shrink that down. Um, it might be better to kind of stick with whatever the default was. If we scroll back up, it was 7.616. So we can go ahead and copy that. Um, so that's the one it figured out, but we can multiply that by two. So we can double the bandwidth, run it, and now it's 9.7 if we double the bandwidth. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and copy that, and we'll do a half bandwidth one. Shrink it down a little bit. So to do that, we'll just say 7.616 divided by 2. And run it. And now it is 11.3. So it's even bigger um, as you shrink the bandwidth. Um, and so the narrower you get it, let's shrink it even more. What is... I think we just divide by another. So divide by two is 3.8. Let's divide by four. I think that will shrink it more. Yeah, math. Okay, so now our bandwidth is 1.9. So if we're just looking very, very closely around there, so just plus or minus two points, basically, it's 10.6. Okay, so it didn't make that much of a difference. Neat. 
Um, so that's how you um, change the different bandwidths. If you want to change the kernel, you can do that too. So let's go ahead and copy this. So by default, it uses the triangular kernel. If we want to give a little bit less weight to the ones right on the cutoff and kind of taper it off slower, um, we can get rid of this H argument. And instead, we can do, there's a kernel argument, and it takes three different kernel types. You can do triangular, which is the default. You can do Epinechnikov, which is kind of the rounder one. And you can do uniform, which is the rectangular one, where everything has the same weight. So we can just come here and say kernel equals, and I'm not going to try to type out Epinechnikov. I'm just going to copy it and paste it and run it. So now if you look here, it says it's using the Epinechnikov kernel. So based on that, we have negative 9.8, or 9.8, because it's not actually negative. Um, so in real life, you just switch around different kernels, different bandwidths, combinations of them, and see what happens and see if um, the effect starts going wild. Right now, it seems pretty stable around 9-ish, 9.8-ish. Um, so um, the last step here where you compare all the effects, basically you just scroll back through your document. Um, this is why it would be great if um, RD Robust had a tidy thing, because then you could actually like save these as objects and then extract the, the coefficients. As it stands now, you can't. So you just have to go back and say this one, which was triangular, double the bandwidth, is 9.7. And so then you scroll down and say, so non-parametric, triangular, um, double ideal bandwidth was 9.7-ish. So basically, you can make a big list of all of those different ones, but you're going to have to do lots of scrolling to do it because there's no easy programmatic way to pull out those things. There's no model summary function that you can use to show them all side by side, which is unfortunate, but that's what we have to work with with this non-parametric regression is continuity stuff. So in the end, you'll just have a whole bunch of different um, effects that range from like 9 to 11-ish. And when you report it, basically that's what you say, that the, the causal effect of this tutoring program for people within the cutoff range, or with, within the range of the cutoff, because this is a local average treatment effect, on average, it boosts your final exam scores by 10-ish points. Um, and you can report all of them in a table and say, here's all the different ways we tried to measure this gap. And it's kind of in that range somewhere. And that it, essentially the program works. It does have a good causal effect. We just don't know precisely what it is. There's no way of knowing that. So that is how you do a regression discontinuity um, with um, R. Fun stuff.